It's been a couple of years since I moved into this workshop and the layout has generally been working pretty well for me, but there are a few things that I want to change. The very first thing that isn't working so well for me is where I store all of my cordless tools. In this cabinet are my most frequently used cordless tools and up here are the ones that I don't use so frequently. Originally, I loved the idea of having all of these tools behind closed doors to keep the dust off them. But in reality, and this is going to sound really lazy, opening and closing the doors all of the time to get the tools out is a bit of a pain and I actually preferred the setup in my old workshop where I just had cubby holes for the tools to sit in. It just makes them easier to grab and also you can see at a glance whether the tool is actually there or not. Also, I've acquired more and more tools over the course of the last two years and I think I can use the space I have much more efficiently. Wood and sheet materials are obviously ridiculously expensive right now. So I'm just going to use up what I've got here in my sheet materials rack. And recently I had some plywood delivered and it came with a cover sheet of 18 millimeter MDF. The delivery driver asked if I wanted it and of course I said yes. It's a bit rough as you can see, it's got footprints and dirt all over it. But this is a workshop project so it's going to be perfect for this. So after pulling out all of the 18 millimeter MDF that I could find, I started ripping down everything to 350 millimeters wide, which is going to be the depth of my cabinet. Then I can start marking up for length and I cut them using my panel sled. I want to cut some housing grooves in the side panels to accommodate the shelves. So I use a scrap of 18 millimeter MDF to mark up the material that I need to remove. And then I can use my 6mm flat tooth grooving blade, which I'll leave a link to in the description box below, to cut about 8mm deep into the MDF. And I can just make three passes to give me that 18mm groove. I test the fit and it looks good. I can then sand away all the dirty footprints using 120 grit. And I applied some acrylic primer before painting. I have some of this hideous green paint which is way too vibrant for my liking so I mixed in some dark grey to tone it down. And I'm aiming to get a nice deep green colour which regular views will know is my favourite colour. Here's a before and after and I'm really pleased with this colour. I'm using a roller to apply it as it's quick, easy and it leaves a great finish. And it gets two coats in total. And it came out lovely and smooth. The only problem I had was that I must have not let the first coat dry for long enough as when I turned the panels over I had some MDF residue left by the scraps that I was using underneath. So I'll need to do some sanding and touch up those areas with paint later on. I'm using polyurethane glue to assemble as it dries quickly so I can carry on working without waiting around too long. And my parallel clamps help to hold it all together and I check with a speed square just to make sure that the shelves are square to the sides. With all the shelves in I can then glue on the top panel. No joinery for that, I'm just going to get it glued in place as it doesn't really need any more strength as nothing's going to be sitting on top of the unit. I'm using 18 gauge brad nails to pin it in place until the glue sets and I'm rounding over all the front edges of the unit using my trim router just to make the edges more resistant to wear. I then gave them a light hand sanding at 100 grit. Next I'm cutting some section dividers and after cutting them to the heights needed I also trimmed off 20mm from the width of these pieces just so that they leave a bit of a reveal from the horizontal shelves. So you can see here the horizontal shelves are overhanging them slightly which I think looks nice. I'd already added a round over to the front edges of the dividers too off camera and I'm using spacers, scraps of plywood just to get the dividers exactly where I want them. I'm nailing the shelves in place, no glue here just in case I ever want to remove these in future. I don't expect I will, but it's good to have the option. Once these spacers have done their job, I used a few of them as cleats at the back of the shelving unit, which will just help to provide extra support to the dividers, and they'll also give me places where I can secure the rack to the wall. For some of the dividers, I used screws instead of nails, as it wasn't always possible to use the nailer in these tight spaces. And eventually I can flip the unit upright and get nails or screws into the dividers via the back of the unit too. Then I get the edges primed with some acrylic primer. I know a lot of people have issues painting MDF edges and they come up with all sorts of crazy ideas on how to do it but it's actually really simple. First use a good primer, 
denib until smooth, I'm using 240 grit for that. And then paint, and that's it done. I didn't spend too much time on this trying to get it crazy smooth though, as this is a workshop project, but you can get it incredibly smooth if you put a little more effort in than I did. While I'm waiting for the paint to dry, I can get the old cabinet removed, and it's held in place with French cleats, but then I drove a few screws into the cleats just for extra security. So those got removed first, and then I can lift it up off the wall, which felt incredibly dangerous as it's quite heavy. But I managed to get it up there on my own somehow, so I knew I could get it down too, but this should really be a two-person job. Speaking of two people, I got my wife to help me lift it down from there, and then I can get the French cleat off the wall. And then Rhea helped me again to lift the new unit in place. I need to make some cutouts to fit around my dust extraction pipes, and for that I'm going to drill a hole with my 76mm hole saw bit after doing some careful measuring. And then I finished the cuts with the jigsaw. That got me most of the way there, but I also needed to make cutouts for the electrical conduit on the wall and the sockets too. And with the unit now up against the wall, I can secure it to the wall studs with a few screws. Then some final denibbing and paint touch-ups. And I can get all of my tools loaded in. I made a second unit in pretty much the same way to sit above my miter saw and hold the less frequently used tools like my reciprocating saw, SDS drill and framing nailer. This video is sponsored by ITS and the ITS sale is now on from the 10th of September to the 27th. So there's never been a better time to save on power tools, hand tools, workwear and more. With big reductions on hundreds of products from top brands including Makita, DeWalt, Milwaukee and more. They have ideal products for both trade professionals and DIY enthusiasts alike. Next day delivery when you order by 7pm and over 20,000 five star Trustpilot reviews. So check out its.co.uk sale now for all the tools you need at the prices you want. And if you use the code RAG AND BONE at checkout, you'll get a free goodie bundle. These old second-hand kitchen cabinets have been serving me well in the workshop, but they have this horrible plastic shell on them, which was flaking off in several places. And normally I wouldn't really care about that because this is a workshop, but as I now have lots of green paint and I was getting a bit carried away with all of the fun of painting, I decided to strip it all off using a heat gun to reveal the MDF door. And I didn't bother priming these, I just went straight to painting. Again, two coats with denibbing in between. And I think they came out looking really nice. And my workshop just gets more and more green. Finally, I want to sort out this little corner of shame. I know we all have one. The top two bins on this metal rack unit I use all of the time for little offcuts of MDF and plywood. But the four bins at the bottom just store stuff in them that I never touch. Bits of metal, rope, straps, legs from old bits of furniture, and all this is taking up prime workshop space, so I started unloading the rack. And this freed up just enough space to accommodate the cabinet that I took off the wall. I really like this cabinet, and as it's metal and lockable, it'll be great for storing all my finishes, chemicals, and flammable liquids, as it'll reduce the likelihood of a fire. And each of these bins are secured together with nuts and bolts, so I'm going to undo the two at the top as there's enough space for those two bins to sit on top of the cabinet. And the rest of this rack is going to be relegated to the shed, as I still want to keep all of the stuff that was in these bins, I just don't want them taking up space in the workshop. I think this setup is going to work really well for me. Um, basically, I've designed it so that all of the tools that I use the most frequently are down near the bottom, like the track saw, the 18 gauge nailer, circular saw, planer, jigsaw and router. And the tools I use less frequently, I just have to reach that little bit higher for. I've also added some storage for some of the accessories with the tools, like for example, the dust bag that comes with the planer, which now sits on a shelf above it, a screw to hold the larger base plate for my trim router, and the spanners that are used for fitting router bits. And I don't think I'll need to move any of the dividers around. Even if I was to change any tools over, there should still be space for them within these cubby holes. But if I do need to make any changes, they're obviously just held in with either nails or screws, so it shouldn't be too problematic. And over this side of the workshop, it's now a much more efficient use of space for things that actually need to be here. And it's more green, so 
what more could you want? Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. And if you'd like to help support the channel, plus get early access to my videos, exclusive content, including this video uploaded recently, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos, there'll be links in the description box to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership. Thank you for watching. Thank you.